OK, so I said we we're going to look at these pseudo quadratic equations in a bit more detail. So we're just going to do a little bit more practice with some of these ones that we have here. So you can tell that this is a pseudo quadratic because the power in the middle, this is an x to the power of a half, is half of the power at the beginning, which means it's a kind of quadratic that we've got. So we can either do the substitution method where I might say that let y equal the square root of x. So y squared is x. This means I can rewrite the equation at the top as y squared plus 3y minus 10 equals 0. And then I can factorise this so that I get y plus 5, y minus 2 equals 0, giving me that either y is equal to minus 5 or y is equal to 2. But remember, because you did this substitution, we're going to have to do it in reverse. So I can replace the y with root x and say that root x is equal to minus 5. Squaring both sides, x would be equal to negative 5 squared, which is 25. And then I'm going to check this side by replacing y with root x, and then I'm going to square both sides so that x is equal to 4. So it looks like I've got these two, two solutions. Now, if you remember from this previous example, these solutions didn't always work, and this one was not a solution. So I want you to think, out of these two that I've just done, do you think there's going to be a problem when I try and solve, uh, when I try and substitute either of these back in? Well, there is going to be a problem. And I think the problem is going to be with this one because of the fact that the root x was equal to negative 5. And we can just try that by substituting in. So if x is equal to 25, we would have 25 plus 3 root 25 minus 10, and we want that to be equal to 0, but we would have 25 plus 3 times 5 minus 10, so that's 25 plus 15 minus 10, which clearly does not equal 0. So x equals 25 is not a solution. Really, just got to be careful with any of them that have got negatives because squaring can often ignore some of those solutions that we have. So x equals 25 is not a solution. You don't have to check the other one. The other one's going to make a lot more sense. But I'm just going to say if x is equal to 4, we would have, substituting into this equation that we've got here, we would have 4 plus 3 times root 4 minus 10. So that would be 4 plus 3 times 2 minus 10. Yeah, that equals to 0. So x equals 4 is a solution. OK, so we're going to get some other pseudo quadratics that look a little bit different here. So this quadratic is indeed a pseudo quadratic because this middle power is half of this end power. And really, that's just the form that we take for these pseudo quadratics when we've got that middle power being half of the first power. So we could try and go directly into factorising this one, or we could do the substitution. I'm going to do both. I, I think I was going to do both with the previous one, but I didn't. So we're going to do both with this one. Now, we've already used y, so I can't say let y equal. But I guess I could say let x equal y to the power of two thirds. So then x squared, this is where the quadratic would come from, would be y to the power of four thirds. So I can rewrite this equation. And when I rewrite this equation, I would have x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Now, does this factorise? 14, 7 and 2. Yep, I think that's going to factorise. So it's going to be x minus 7, x plus 2 equals 0. So either x is equal to 7 or x is equal to minus 2. Now, if I think about what the substitution actually was here, I've said that x is actually y to the power of 2 over 3. So y to the power of 2 over 3 would be equal to 7. So if I want to say what y is, I would have to do 7 to the power of 3 over 2. Because if you think about it, if you've got y to the power of 2 over 3, if you do it to the power of 3 over 2, you do just get y, y to the power of 1. So that's why you, you raise it to the power of 3 over 2. Now, 7 to the power of 3 over 2, we could just leave it like that if we wanted to. But 7 to the power of 3 over 2 is 18.5 to one decimal place. So that one is going to be a solution there. Now we've got that x is minus 2. Let's just move this across. So that would be y to the power of 2 thirds is going to be equal to minus 2. So y would be equal to minus 2 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, I wonder what the calculator is going to say. Hopefully, you can think 
what might happen here. So it's going to be minus 2 to the power of 3 over 2. And you may be able to spot here, it's got that I at the end, which is an imaginary number. If you do it on your calculator, you may get like an error because we're trying to actually do something that is not allowed in maths, not allowed in this type of maths that we've been doing. And it's to do with this little two that we've got down here. This two that we've got down here means doing the square root. And we're trying to do the square root of a negative number, which will lead us into complex and imaginary numbers. So for this one here, there are no real, this, this does not have a real solution. This has no real solution. So the only solution is 7 to the power of 3 over 2, which is 18.5. And I guess if we wanted to, we could have rewritten that as we know that the over 2 means root 7. And then to the power of three means cubing. So it's root seven cubed. OK, so these are kind of weird. They're challenging the way of what we think about these equations. I did say I was going to do this one going straight into factorizing. I could have written straight away y to the power of two over three minus seven and y to the power of two over three plus two equals zero just by spotting that I'm factorizing two things that will multiply to minus five, sorry, multiply to minus 14 and add to minus five, and that the, the thing I'll be dealing with will be half of this power or just this one that I've got here, and then solving the, equ the equation in the same way. Okay, so I've got a few more down here. Let's have a look at these. So I might see if we can do this one going straight away into factorizing it. So I want to think of two numbers that multiply to minus 12, but add to minus one. So it's gonna definitely be something to do with four and three. And instead of there being a to the power of four at the beginning, there'll be an a squared and there'll be an a squared. So I think the numbers are going to be minus four and plus three. So this tells me that either a squared is equal to 4, so a is going to be equal to plus or minus root 4, which is plus or minus 2, or this is going to tell me that a squared is equal to negative 3. So if I was going to try and take the square root of negative 3, I will have no real solutions. Remember, you can't take the square root of negative numbers unless you start looking at imaginary numbers as well. So my calculator there is showing imaginary numbers, which is in further maths, not in normal maths. So this has no real solutions. So the only solutions to this equation are just a is equal to plus or minus root 2. OK, this one is a little bit harder to spot. But actually, this power that we have got here is half the power that we've got here, which means that it is a type of quadratic. So I'm not going to do this one with the um, just recognizing it. I'm going to do a bit of a substitution. So for this question that I've got here, I'm going to let y equal the middle one, which is 2 to the power of x. So y squared would be 2 to the power of x squared. And remember, you multiply the powers, so it'd be 2 to the power of 2x. So we would have y squared minus 9y plus 8 equals 0. Now, I think this is going to factorize to y minus 1, y minus 8. So the solutions are that y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 8. Now, y is actually 2 to the power of x. So we're going to have 2 to the power of x is equal to 1. Well, you should know from your index laws that that solution is when x is 0. Or 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. So 2 to the power of something is 8. And actually, it is when it is 3. It is 2 cubed, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. We're going to look at this last one that we've got here. I think generally people will probably prefer to do these with a bit of a substitution. So I'm going to let y equal, see if you can think what it would be, It'd be to the power of a third. y squared would be b to the power of two thirds. I just use y, you don't have to use y, you can use other letters. So I would get y squared plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. So for this equation, I need to think of two numbers that multiply to minus 8 that add to 2. So that is going to be y plus 4 and y minus 2. So here the solutions are that y is minus 4 or y is 2. But remember, y is b to the power of a third. So b to the power of a third is minus 4 or b to the power of a third is going to be 2. 
So I need to cube both sides here. So if I cube the left-hand side, I get B. If I cube the right-hand side, I get minus 64. If I cube the left-hand side, I get B. If I cube the right-hand side, I get 8. Now, let's actually substitute this one in and see if they work, because we've got some negatives um, in the answers, and usually that's where things might go a bit wrong. So if we have, let's do the um, if B is equal to minus 64, then let's actually substitute it in. So we'd have minus 64 to the power of 2 over 3 plus 2 multiplied by minus 64 cube rooted minus 8 equals 0. So let's be lazy. We're going to do minus 64 to the power of 2 thirds. Ah, so look there, we've got something that's happened here. We've got an imaginary number. Now, that is coming from the fact that we're doing a cube root of it and then squaring it. Now, we can't, well, that seems rather strange, actually, because I thought we could do this. Let me just double check this for a second. We're going to the power of 2 over 3. Yep, so we're definitely going to have an imaginary number here. This is because we are cube rooting a negative, which should give us a negative, but then we're squaring that. Hmm. I was anticipating that to give us 16. Let's try it just with one third for a second. Because the cube root of a negative number, that's weird. It doesn't like it in the indices, but it does like it when we do it as the cube root and then we square it. So that should work. We get 16 plus two times the cube root of that, which is 2 times minus 4, and then we get minus 8 equals 0. So that's 16 minus 8 minus 8, which is equal to 0. So if b equals minus 64, that is a solution. The other one is if b was equal to 8. So that's 8 to the power of 2 over 3 plus 2 times 8 to the power of a third minus 8. Well, 8 cube rooted is going to be 2. And 2 squared is 4. So that's then going to be 2 times the cube root of 8, which is 2, minus 8, which is 0. So actually, b being equal to 8 and b being equal to minus 64 are both solutions. Now, I want to check this to see about these roots that we've got here. So I'm going to go to Desmos on my thing that I've got here. So it's b to the power of 2 thirds. I'm going to see if I can find the roots to see if it actually crosses on the graph. So it's b to the power of 2 thirds plus 2b to the power of a third minus 8. And I'm going to try and see where it crosses on Desmos. So I'm going to have to type it in with x instead. So it's going to be x to the power of 2 thirds plus 2x to the power of a third minus 8. And it does indeed cross the graph at two places at 8 and minus 64. So both of those were solutions. The bit my calculator was doing earlier was just misbehaving, and I'm not quite sure why it was misbehaving like that. And then I've written here, if you'd like to, you can try and make up some of your own for these questions. And the way you can make up some of your own so you just need to make sure the first power is double the second power. The first power is double the second power. It's true of all of them, and that should work. Generally, um, you won't need to check all of the solutions, but it's quite worth knowing um, that you can check them by substituting in and seeing what happens. Okay, well done.